Hi, I am Muhammad Fahim Ullah. I work in the area of controller performance assessment in this era of big data under the supervision of Professor Raghunathan Ringer Swamy. In this video, I am going to talk about three different aspects of controller performance assessment. I will also talk about how big data is related to the area of controller performance assessment. In my research, I look at three different aspects of controller performance assessment. The first being detection of oscillation that is detection and diagnosis of the control loops which are oscillatory. The second is root cause analysis that is detection of the root node responsible for oscillation or any form of disturbance generated in the interacting control loops. And finally, detection and diagnosis of a phenomenon called stiction in a control loop. To understand the role of control, let us first take an example that we all are familiar with, a hot water shower in cold winter. We have knob to control the flow rate of water during bath. We adjust the hot water knob in an attempt to get the desired temperature of water but we will not get to this temperature immediately. Only after some time, we will feel the water becoming warm and most of the time it crosses the desired level. This would drive us to adjust the hot water knob again but in the opposite direction to get the desired temperature of water. This is an example of control based on human senses. Here a human senses the temperature of water for feedback and responds accordingly. The whole process works in a closed loop fashion. What controllers do in industries is something similar. Control systems in process industries keep track of the different parameters in a process like pressure, temperature, etc. making sure that they are in the desired levels. Control systems helps reduce the variability in production while increasing the efficiency of operation and ensuring safety. Basically, controllers compare the data they get from measuring instruments called sensors with the expected or desired set point and respond accordingly. Controllers calculate the actuation necessary to bring the system to the desired state and send this information to an actuator which is typically a control valve that changes the flow. In our example, our human skin that sensed the temperature of water was the sensor, the knob was the control valve which was the actuator and the human brain that processed the information to decide how much to actuate was the controller. This loop which consists of the sensor, the controller, the actuator, the information of the process under control and the feedback mechanism is referred to as the control loop. Several hundreds to a thousand control loops are in place in an industry. Controllers in a control loop are tuned to make sure that the system tracks desired set points correctly and quickly and remains stable. During setting up of the control system, a particular tuning of the parameters is employed to get an optimal operation. However, the performance of a control system deteriorates over time which makes the existing tuning suboptimal. Hence, there is a need for controller performance assessment. Basically, controller performance assessment is the task of identifying the health of a controller that is how well the controller is performing. This is important because any problem in a control loop most likely leads to oscillation in the process variable, loss of raw material, profitability, etc. The need for an assessment is on high considering the current scenario in industry where only about a third of the control loops perform satisfactorily. Diagnosing and improving the control loops are very important from an economic perspective. Oscillations may be set up in control loops due to poor controller tuning, valve nonlinearities or other external sources. Oscillation is a phenomena observed very commonly in a wide range of system from that range from a simple pendulum to a human heart. The challenges such as non-stationarity, intermittency, measurement noise, presence of multiple oscillation at the same time, etc. are addressed from a data analysis perspective. Large amount of data from different domains are analyzed here. 
This can be done by first finding the dominant frequencies and localizing the region of oscillation for the identified dominant frequencies. Determining the frequency and region of oscillation precisely is a challenging task. We are working towards identifying a robust method for the same. In industries, we deal with many interacting control loops. Once the disturbance or oscillation enters through any one of the control loops, it propagate to all other interacting loops. Detecting the root cause in such scenarios is very cumbersome, especially when the number of loops is very large. Since the data associated is big, which increases the complexity of the problem. Root cause analysis is very important in industries because identifying the wrong loop as an oscillatory one may lead to a huge economical loss. In my research, a set of interacting control loops represented by a directed graph are simulated with oscillations and disturbances introduced to any one of the nodes. We develop sophisticated algorithms to successfully detect the root node generating the oscillation from the simulated data. The next aspect I work on is detecting stiction in a control wall. Stiction is basically static friction in a control wall which results in sticking of the wall. Stiction exists in control walls due to aging which may be due to activation of the metal siding surface, tight packing, addition of foreign material, lubricants, depletion, etc. Stiction in a control wall leaves a distinct time signature in the shape like a square, triangular, trapezoidal, etc. for the process variable. When the controller output and the process variable are plotted against each other, if slip jump is ignored in control wall movement, we see a parallelogram like curve appearing. Larger the distance between L1 and L2 in the figure pronounced is the effect of stiction. However, for the case of multiple input, multiple output systems, large amount of data have to be processed before running through an algorithm for stiction detection. Various data-driven approaches are used to qualitatively and quantitatively identify stiction in control loop. Stiction in control wall is modeled using various models. The one parameter stiction model is shown here where D is the stiction parameter. An intuitive understanding is required to choose the grid size of stiction parameter D when identifying stiction using one parameter model and proper input excitation is needed when generating simulated data. One of the recurring themes in all the problems that I have discussed today would be the handling of large amount of data or in other words big data, which is a buzz word of this era. Big data refers to the large volume of data, both structured and unstructured. Collection of large amount of data include data from social media, business transaction, processing plants, etc. Better understanding of big data will result in better decision and business moves. When big data is combined with high power analytics, it would be possible to determine the root cause for failures and defects. Capturing, recording and storage of large amount of data were serious obstacle in the area of big data. However, with recent developments in the technology, these challenges have been overcome. Here in the context of the problem discussed, large amount of data can be obtained from controllers and sensors in the interacting and non-interacting control loops. This data has to be stored and later pre-processed before running through our algorithms for oscillation detection or restriction diagnosis. This brings us to the end of the talk. Thank you.